There's something different about this cinematography. It looks incredible and it follows every rule you should when shooting, but something about it feels different. What makes documentary cinematography different to narrative cinematography? They both tell a story, often use the same cameras, lenses, lighting, and have famous people starring, but it's a completely different experience when watching. In today's video, I'll be looking at what documentary cinematography is, as well as what makes it different to narrative. Apologies for the shorter video this week, I've been super busy, but I'll be back to the normal length videos in the next couple of weeks. Before we get started looking at documentary cinematography, I want to explain the two docs that we will be looking at today, Free Solo and Jim and Dandy The Great Beyond, two completely different documentaries from their subject matter to how they were shot. Now Free Solo is one of the most famous and well known documentaries of the past decade and for good reason, it showcases a man doing something that none of us would ever be able to do and even though we know the outcome, we are on the edge of our seats the entire time. Jim and Andy, on the other hand, is a little different, because not only is it about the entertainment industry, it's also full of archive footage, making for a completely different experience when watching. I think the best word to describe documentary cinematography is naturalistic, as it applies across the board. Look at a documentary surrounding a high security prison and then one surrounding bumblebees, two opposite ends of the spectrum in regards to subject matter, however in both the cinematography is naturalistic. Sure, they may style some of the shots and give it a different colour grade, but when you look at the foundation of the cinematography, it's the same. There is also a stark difference in documentary cinematography, as like a narrative film, there are genres. To quickly go over them with a brief explanation, we have Poetic. This favours the mood and tone, and usually has a lot of visually striking images that are able to tell the story. Expository which is just from one viewpoint that often features a voiceover and lots of stock and archival footage. Participatory. These feature a lot of interviews as it's defined by the interaction between the director and the subject. Observational. Best described as the audience being a fly on the wall. Reflexive. Pretty much a behind the scenes film. Performative. Where the filmmaker is the focus. Now, depending on the documentary, you can do so much with the cinematography, especially if you're shooting an observational doc. So what is it that makes documentary cinematography look so different? Well, for one, there's no fictional plot, so you don't have much motivation for camera movement and angle. However, you can make it more interesting to watch by your lighting choices and compositions. For example, in documentaries, when they want to hide the identity of the interviewee, they may block out their faces using shadows. There is also a lot more freedom when it comes to documentary cinematography, as when you aren't doing interviews, you usually don't have control of the lighting. Now maybe that's a pain, but part of the feeling of a documentary is simply the raw atmosphere that you get. I find it especially so in Free Solo, where we truly see what Alex's life is like. We have the scenes in the van where it's quite dark, claustrophobic, and for us, a bit lonely, but he likes that, and it's how he wants to live his life. It's also true to the film. Now, we then have the climbing scenes, which are these extravagant locations featuring some of the best climbing walls in the world, allowing for some of the most beautiful shots that I've ever seen in a documentary, but you also expect nothing less from Yosemite. But there are also films like this, I mean even though it doesn't have as nice an ending as Free Solo, 127 Hours looked and felt just like a non-fiction piece, even though it didn't at the same time. And that's not just because of James Franco. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have Jim and Andy, which is an expose on Man on the Moon, with a hint of reflexive due to the showcasing of never before seen footage of Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman behind the scenes. And whilst there isn't much to talk about cinematography wise, due to pretty much all of it being archive footage, the simplicity of the interviews is just what we need when we're watching the Jim Carrey. Overall, documentary cinematography, whilst different to narrative, really just boils down to one thing, realism. 
Now this wasn't a video about how to shoot a documentary, however if you would prefer something like that then leave a comment down below. If you have a film or show that you would like to see me break down then leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful a thumbs up is appreciated and if you'd like to see more videos like this then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.